my friends, and welcome back to Where Wendy Creates. Today, we are making seat belt covers, and we are going to go ahead and cut out two pieces of fabric and one piece of batting for every seat cover we're doing. And we're gonna do those measurements 10 inches by six and a half inches. And why uh, that measuring? Because that gives us a nice long cushion on the seat belt and it is going to be six and a half inches. To... And we have our six and a half by 10 inch pieces of fabric cut out. And now uh, we're going to do two different uh, seat belt covers for our seat belts in the car so they don't uh, tear at our necks or, or aren't uh, uncomfortable and hot. So we're going to go ahead, lay it on the batting, and we're gonna cut the batting 10 inches by six and a half inches as well. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Where Wendy Creates. Today, I want to go ahead and make the shoulder straps uh, for the car, a little soft cushion to go around the shoulder straps so that they're not um, tight and burdening against your neck in the car. So let's get started. What I have are two sets of two pieces of fabric and one piece of batting. And I have some hook and loop that is gonna help connect those around the car seat so that our neck is not going to get um, the rug burn, if you will, on the seat belt. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the sewing machine. I'm gonna be using a, a universal 14 size needle today. And we're gonna put that into the machine. And I have um, in this, there's oranges, yellows, and pinks. So since I've been using pink thread, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that thread in the machine. And it is good to change your needle. I did want to uh, let you know, it's good to change your needle after so many projects or after a uh, quilt top. And that way you're always going to uh, have a uh, smooth sewing experience. So just like you change your bobbin and your thread color, you need to change your needle. And I do have 100% uh, cotton in both the upper and the lower. That is definitely not necessary. Might wanna try an 80-20 blend to give yourself a little more strength in the thread. And we're gonna get started here. Soon as I find, as soon as I'm able to thread my little needle here with my eyes going bad and my fingers getting bigger. All right. And there we go. So we are ready. We're going to go ahead and paint. Uh, these are batik fabric, so they look almost the same on the front and the back, but I'm putting the two faces facing each other and I'm putting the batting on one side and I'm lining up all three pieces. The batting likes to stick, so you might have to uh, adjust that a couple of times, but I'm lining up all three pieces, all three identical sizes. And sometimes if you lay it down on the table, just smooth it out with your fingers, that works really well. And I hope you uh, watch my other tutorial about making a, a cord wrap and this is a very similar project, just using a larger fabric. And we're going to leave an opening so we can reach our fingers in and turn it. So I'm gonna be starting right at the end of one opening and I wanna stop giving myself a nice space for my fingers to get in and turn the fabric. And we're just using a straight stitch on a 2.5, a three, your average stitch length. I'm locking in my stitch when I first start and we're just gonna go all the way.
Okay, needle down, pivot, back stitch at the beginning. opening that I can turn my uh, design around and we're going to go ahead and cut off all four corners and I was worried about the fabric on this side and the uh, batting but it does look like it had plenty so I'm going to go ahead and trim that down to the quarter inch and again it just shows you how easy it is to uh, work with uh, fabric and batting when the size a uh, particular is not a quilt. You can be off a little bit and fix it real easy. All right. And turning it right side out. And then we're gonna put the hooks and loops on opposite sides uh, lengthwise as well as front and backwise. but we're gonna do a quick top stitch around the entire length of fabric. And I'm just turning my uh, corners right side out. And you can use a uh, stiletto or a kitchen chopstick or a, a skewer. Um, I use the point of my scissors and help me ever so gently push out those corners so you get them relatively square. Sometimes it just needs an extra little push right at the very end. That one's not too bad. All right. And we can take this to the ironing board and press it. Um, and then we want to simply turn our opening right there. We're gonna do a scant quarter inch, closing that up and going all the way around. Okay, and we're gonna close that up and do a scant quarter inch all the way around. Right on the edge. Probably about an eighth inch is perfect if you're comfortable with that stitch. Needle down, foot up, pivot, down. your threads, trim your threads. And we have our piece and we can press it now and then we're going to uh, hook our hooks and loops 
onto our piece to go over. Put the hooks and loops on this side of the strap wrap. And we're going to uh, put it probably about equidistance like we did the first one. We're just locking in our stitch to begin. Going slowly across the hooks and loops, needle down. When we stop, And to turn it, we want to put our fingers right in between the fabric part, not in between the batting, but in between the two pieces of fabric. And I like to put my thumb in all the way over to another corner. And then I will hold that with both fingers, turn it right side out, and then gently pull. Gently pull the rest of the piece through. And stick my finger in another corner, pop that corner through, and then push out all four corners, the other two. Try to get my nice little point in there. Okay, and right at our opening, we want to fold that over, hold those pieces together, and that's where we're going to start sewing our approximately 1 8 inch stitch all the way across. threads out of the way so we don't sew them down. Double stitch, pull it out, and our piece is complete. And we want to cut off our piece of hook and loop that we're going to use. And again, I'm going to trim this into uh, two pieces. So we are going to put it on You have one end and then another piece over here. And let's get that sewn down for us. We're going to put it right on our stitch line here on the very edge. About with three quarter inch between it and the end. Okay. 
again, once we have our hook and loop on one side, we're gonna go ahead and take the pieces on the direct other side, and we're gonna put these on about three quarters inch from the end and three quarters inch from the end over here. There we have it, my friends. Just got to trim a few threads, but we have two seat belt cushions are complete. And I wanted to show you those same seat belt straps can be used on your refrigerator. So if you have grubby little hands getting into the refrigerator often. Put these on it and they're comfy to grip. They're easy to move around. They're the perfect size for most any refrigerator door. There you are. Try it out. Okay, and we're trying the seat belt strap. And your handy dandy seat belt straps fits any vehicle with a standard seat belt in it. It's going to protect your neck and shoulder anytime you're driving or in the vehicle and be nice and comfy. And it goes on super, super easy. You have your Velcro on both sides. You take it around your strap, fold it in, fold it. Whoops, let's do it. And you have your seat belt strap. Or, of course, you can do it the right way and have it on the back and protect yourself in any car that you're in. It's never going to rub on your neck. You're never going to have that rug burn again. Thanks, my friends.